Hello, I'm Atubo George. Now, this is a new week, and guess what? The Lord said, Look, angelic assistance is all over the place. So, you know what to expect this week? Expect good things to happen around you. Praise God. Because where you have angels at work, I told you last week, the Lord says, You will need it. You will need it. Now, what does that mean? You see, Proverbs tells us, let your eyes observe my sins. Now, when God comes to you and says, you will need angelic assistance, you should have enough sense to realize that, hey, that, that means what is coming this week, it's not going to be normal. Now, don't, don't just swing your mind to think that means evil is coming this week, so I would need angels to help me. It also means that, look, the good things that God has planned for you, you will need angels to help you locate it and bring it to you. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we bless you for this whole week. Thank you for your love. It is because of your love that you give us your word. That's your demonstration of love to us. So today we receive your word gladly. And I declare right now, burdens are being lifted. Yokes are being destroyed by the power of the Holy Spirit, even as the word comes forth. Thank you for deliverance taking place all over. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, I'm taking this angelic assistance further last week we dwelt on how angels have been sent to help you in time of trouble see and i told you we, we really touched on a lot of things last week uh -uh. and if you didn't listen to it go listen to it and and i also encourage you to to sign up on our youtube channel subscribe to it and then put on the notification so that once the message drops, you will receive a notification and you can watch it or you watch it later. Praise God. But all, it's, it's all there on YouTube. You can, you can go scroll, look for different titles and get, just get blessed. Everything there will bless you. Praise God. So now we're going further. And I want to begin to show you something about angels. And I want to, to turn your Bibles with me to Psalms chapter 91 and verse 11 and 12. Psalm 91. Now, we all know the scripture. I mean, if you don't know Psalm 91, then you are dealing with trouble. <laughs> Praise God. So, verse 11, Psalm 91, verse 11, says, For he shall give his angels charge over you. Did you see that? Who will give his angels? God will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Now, I want you to get what he said. He will give his angels charge over you. This is a character of God. This is, this is actually what you call logos. It speaks of the character of God. So God gives his angels charge concerning you. And what is the charge? The angels are to keep you in all your ways. Did you see that? Watch this. Next verse. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Did you see that? God is so mindful of you. You know, you know the Bible says, you know, they had to ask God, says, what is man that you are so mindful of him? <laughs> I'm telling you, I mean, God made man and said, angels, you keep this fellow in all his ways. Hallelujah. And then God continued, he didn't stop there. He said, look, angels, I want you to bear them up in your hands i don't even want to hear that they dash their foot against a stone now you can sit down there and start telling yourself eh, it doesn't literally mean a stone it me can mean and uh, trouble hey hitting a stone is hitting a stone whatever you call it you understand what I'm, whatever you call it hitting an object hitting a stone with your foot or with your car or whatever it is. 
Now get this. If the charge was that direct, say, I don't want to even hear that they hit their foot against a stone. Is it then sickness that you now hit yourself against? Or is it, is, it, is it something big like failure? You understand what I'm saying? Come on now. Think. Think. Now God is that mindful of you. He has already given. Now he's talking about you. And you are here now. So you are not praying now. Go God give your angels charge concerning me. As long as you are here. You, you know. Understand in context. David here wasn't referring to himself. In this, in this chapter. He was talking about a particular people. From verse 1. He said he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So he is talking about someone. A, the character of somebody and what happens to this person and that includes you and I let me show you let me show you something here Psalm 34 and verse 7 it says the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him wow <laughs> ah, you know when you read scriptures you, you pause and think about it. Just like David will say, Selah, pause, think about it. The angel of the Lord encamps. <laughs> oh, Bushaka. Do you know what that means? You, you, like, you go camp somewhere. <laughs> you go make your home in a place. Go stay somewhere. You camp there until something happens. Now, in this case, the angel of the Lord encamps all around. So, the Alabama Shantana. Who? Those who fear the Lord. And I've always said this. If this is writ was written in the New Testament, he said, encamp around those who love him. Praise God. Because the word translated fear him is the same word translated love him. That's what he's trying to communicate. So, he's not talking about terrifying fear. But he's talking about the one who fear him to do his will you understand what i'm saying so it's the same thing you know like jesus said if you love me keep my commandments so when he says the angel of god encounters around those who fear him he's not talking about those who are shaking when god is mentioned he's talking about those who love the lord praise god and how do you know you love the lord you love his word you keep his word praise god so he says the angel of god encounters around those who fear him and delivers them mm -hmm. why is he encamping around you i told you this last week there are we are in the midst of innumerable company of angels that's what scriptures say do you do you do you just know who you are and you're sitting down there saying, everybody has abandoned me. I don't know what life will mean to me anymore. Oh, me, me, Angama, me, 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 me. Hey, this life. Oh, can you imagine everybody? Hey, do you know those who I camp around you? Do you know the angels that are surrounding you? And what's their job to deliver you? Like Kuba Yakadishi. Oh, Majeki Baradi Keshota. You know, so let's go back to Psalm 91. Then I'm going to show you something. Because I'm, I'm going to take you through a journey now. It says, For he has given his angels charge. So God gave them charge. That's why they encamp around us. And God says, Don't even let their foot dash against a stone. Brothers and sisters, I'll tell you this. Now think, think, think about this. How many times have you literally dashed your foot against a stone? Do you know whenever that happens, an angel comes into judgment? See, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's the truth. Your foot, dash against, your foot is dashed against a stone, an angel gets into judgment. An angel is queried. How did that happen? I wish the Lord would open your understanding to this truth. Mm. This is not just something we are saying. I'm not saying it to psych you or to hype you. I'm saying it because it is the truth. And the earlier you begin to dwell on this truth and on this thought, the better for you. Now, 
I want us to say something. Exodus chapter 23. Now, we have all this benefit of having angels all around us. And they are doing great stuff for us. But you see, understand something. The fact that you have angels all around you doesn't make it that doesn't mean your life will automatically work out right. You have a big role to play in the midst of angels. Now that's what I'm going to be showing you. I don't know if we have enough time today to even enter into it. Let's see, we can, we can start today. Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 20. God is speaking. He says, Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Who's speaking now? God is speaking. Does it look like what we just read in the book of Psalms? He says he will give his angels charge concerning you to keep you in all your ways. Now, this, this is God talking to Moses and the children of Israel. He says, behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. So who's going to take you on the journey to the place that God has already prepared? The angel. Verse 23. Now, let me, let me, let me continue. He says, beware of him and obey his voice. Did you see? So God is saying the angel is going to instruct, obey his voice. All right. He said, do not provoke him for he will not pardon your transgression. For my wrath, my name is in him. Now, this was a special angel. So that God was sending. Now, he says, but if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak. Notice, if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak. Okay, so... What's going on here? He didn't say, if you obey his voice and do all that he speaks. He says, if you obey his voice and do all that I speak. So God, he said, I would speak, but you will hear it from the voice of the angel. Is that hard to understand? <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, okay. He said, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. For my angel will go before you and bring you into the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Now, watch this. When the children of Israel left Egypt, I said, if we don't have enough time, we'll continue from here tomorrow. We, when, when the children of Israel left Egypt, God didn't leave them to wonder about looking for the way. No, 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 no. From day one, God sent them an angel. That angel was a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. Now I want you to think about something deep here. An angel was leading the children of God and the journey they set out for was meant to be a 40 days journey. But hey, they were led by the angel day and night and yet, they spent 40 years before they got into the land that God promised them. The question is, why? What happened? What hap why didn't the angel lead them directly into the place? We're going to be talking about that tomorrow. I don't want you to miss tomorrow. Praise God. Listen, as you believe and receive these words, Miracles are taking place in your life as a result of angelic activities in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I love you greatly today. Go and bring back testimonies. Bye-bye.